Hello everyone, and welcome to Across the Obelisk. Across the Obelisk is a um, single player or multiplayer roguelike card based game. If you liked Slay the Spy, you'll see a lot of things you'll like in this. Uh, today I'm just going to quickly run through what the very basics of the game, how it starts, what the things are, just to get you rolling. So, you have four characters in here. Typically they can be any mixture of people. Once you've unlocked everyone, there's no difficulty of who you can put in what slot. But a good standard start would be to have a tank, which is the top row of the warriors. You have a scout, who's sort of like a rogue, ranged arch sort of person. So Andrin, I'll put him in slot two. Then you've got the mages. Evelyn's sort of a mixture of all the different magic types. I'm going to put her in here. Mages sort of deal damage and do a bit of supporting as well by buffing people. And finally, as standard healers, uh, Reginald's an all-round sort of healer. Healers can also do sort of holy damage or mind damage, depending on who you pick. But it's always good to have at least one of each of these people. But as I've said, the more you play this game, the more you can customise it. You could run one tank with two healers and one damage dealer or any combination of the above. So you can fix everything in here. The more you play people, the more levels they get. Each person has two levels. The first is um, these points. So every time you level up, you get these points that you can spend to give you little bonuses like more health, more speed and whatnot all the way through. Um... And the second is your rank. And now the more you play each individual champion, you get little bonuses as well. These affect your starting items, which if you right click them, you can see that you start off with a white one, then it becomes to a blue one, then it becomes the yellow one. And so the more you play a champion, you get slightly better things. So, and finally on this page, you have the madness difficulty. Typically you start off at level zero and the more you play, the more you unlock, but it's sort of the extra level of difficulty once you finish the game. So we'll start at madness zero. And you've got the C, which you can input manually, but I'll leave it as random. Once you start the game, you've got some text which you can skip past, and you have the game map. In this game, there are four acts. An act is a map, uh, and you progress from left to right, and you can choose a point. And as you can see, there are lines dashing out showing where you can go next from here. So you always start every act at a shop, and in the shop, you have several buildings. On the left, we have the Magic Forge, which is where you buy cards. You have filters down here to filter for certain effects, but don't worry about that right now. You have upgraded, which lets you um, buy upgraded versions of cards, but I wouldn't recommend doing that just yet. But for each class on the left, you can click and you can choose loads of different cards. So you've got a search function at the top where you can type in the things you want or certain effects like dark, for example, is a certain effect. And it will show all the dark effects, which is this purple circle here. You can right click any card and it will tell you in detail what each of the effects do so you can see that heart that's decay and on the right hand side you can see the upgrade and on the right hand side it shows that you can upgrade this four cost card to either the blue version or the yellow version and the yellow version is cheaper but the blue version does more damage there's no real difference between blue and yellow it's just two different upgrade trees the second building is the church this is where you can remove cards you need to have a minimum of 15 cards in your deck but once you have more than 15 you can click on any card and remove it the next building along the top is a zig Zingarian cart. This is where you can buy divinations. A divination is an end of combat reward. A fast divination, basic and advanced, costs increasingly more and you get slightly better rewards. So if I go into a fast divination, this is a typical end of combat reward system. So once you beat a fight, you get to choose bonus cards or shards instead. This is where you can say, right, uh, so this is my tank. He's going to be taking a lot of damage. So I want him to deal some damage, so I'm going to go for a Leap Slam or a, a Poisonous Shot, and so on and so forth. And if you don't want any of these cards, you can just click the shards, and as you can see at the top, it goes to 2100. I've taken two of these, it should go to 2180, and it does. And you can spend any gold here in any shop to get uh, different rewards. So if we go to Advanced Divination, the previous one had three, this is four, but also the high level, you've got purple cards here, and you also have some more upgraded cards. So, and you get higher rewards. So it's whether or not you want to have lots of short divinations with free cards to get more cards, or you want to bet it all for purple cards, which are better rewards. On the right, we have the armory. This is where you can basically spend gold uh, to buy items. You can also re-roll for a bit of gold to get a new shop. You also have pets, which you can unlock later on in the game. Uh, you won't have them in your first playthrough, but pets are basically little minions that help do it additional effects during a fight. The first one you can easily unlock is Betty. If you right click Betty, what Betty does is she provides the owner of the pet 6% resistance to mind damage and every turn she casts Tantrum. And down here, Tantrum deals 6 mind damage and applies 1 insane. So it's a little bit of extra damage on the side. You can buy a pet and so you select who you want the item on. So I click this, it shows which slot it will take up and I click buy and it goes down there. 
The final building is the altar. This is where you can choose to upgrade cards. And so you click on a card and it will say, do you want to upgrade defend to be more armor or less cost, but more but less armor and an additional stat. And you can choose which one you want to upgrade to. Uh, you can also go to here to change the different upgrade tree for free uh, if you have a certain uh, number of points in the talent tree. So if I change my mind, I actually want it to be zero. I can transform it back into this one or vice versa into this one. Uh, up here we have town upgrades. There's a currency which are these crates. These crates can be used to unlock more perks. So more crafting items in the shop or divinations are cheaper and stuff like that. You, you unlock these crates by progressing through the game. Finally on the round side, if you play, play a game, you get to retain some currency at the end of it. And you can click on this chest to accept that reward and get more gold and more shards. So we have two, we have sort of three currencies at the very top. We have gold, which is used to pay for divinations, items, and pets. And we have shards. And shards are used to pay for upgrades to cards, buying cards, and that's basically it. And we finally have the crates, which are used for the town upgrades. A final note is when you have all the um, upgrades, you can sell supplies. So you can sell one crate for 100 gold and 100 shards. At the moment, I have 151 surplus. So I, if I wanted to, I could sell loads of these to get loads of bonus shards. Once you've set up your decks for everyone, for your first playthrough I recommend you just go through and accept this. You go to ready and you can choose which path you want to go on. There are sort of three or four icon types on this map. We have swords which is a basic combat if you hover over it shows who you're fighting. We have books which are either grey, green and sometimes if you get lucky you get blue or purple ones. These are events and there's hundreds of different events. And depending on what characters you have, you can have special bonuses. So these can lead to combat or they can lead to dice rolls or any sort of event. Uh, they, they often are better to go to than combats because you can have bonus rewards and they're worth exploring these different types of events. If you can, if you see a purple event, it's always worth trying to go to that, work your way towards one. In this map, we don't have any. Um, next, we have these icons, these people's faces. This is how you unlock extra characters. You, you start a quest by going to one of these. This is Fools, the uh, scout poison guy. This is Heine, the tank, Cornelius, the mage, and Otis, the healer. So if you want to unlock these characters, you have to start a quest by going to one of these points. And in the later acts, you'll have to finish that quest and you'll sort of discover it or you can Google the best way to unlock people. The next icon is this anvil. This is where you can go to upgrade cards. So you have to spend shards here. We have the shop, which is this gold icon. It, we can buy more items. This is the final boss, Yilma, of the first act. Um, and the only other icon here are these hatches. Uh, these are sort of teleporters. Uh, there's one here and one here. If you take the starting caravan after you've done first playthrough, it can teleport you to, I think, the bridge. So you bypass all these starting fights. I tend to prefer to take the fights so you get more experience. And, and this one here is a suspicious hatch, which takes you underground to a different route for some more combat. Oh, and finally, there's a healing um, icon, which is where you can go to heal your people for 30% of their health or remove curses if you happen to pick any up or if you die. Combat is very simple. We'll go to this bottom one here. It's, it's, it's fairly intuitive. Everyone has t speed, which is at the top, and that determines order. You, there are certain cards which can upgrade speed. You have mana, which is shown at the very bottom. The yellow bars is how much mana you have, and the green bars is how much mana next turn you're going to have. By default, you'll get three additional mana every turn, and any mana you don't spend is retained. Mana cost on the top left of the card, this one costs two, and it shows you the certain effects. So it will attack the front monster, as said in the middle of the card. This is front monster. This is any monster, so I can choose who it goes to. And um, there's certain effects, and if you hover over it, it tells you what they do. You have certain buffs, which are in blue beneath a champion. In this case, this is speed, this is reinforced, and there are debuffs, which are in red below a champion. There's plenty to read about and learn about, but it's best to learn by doing. When you hover over a damaged card, it will show you how much damage it's going to do to each person if you have a choice to do that. We'll see that in a second. Now it's the enemy's turn. They have two in a row. And then it's Evelyn's turn. So for example, this is uh, Fire Blast. If I, by hovering over it, I can see it would do no damage to the guy on the left. Or it would do six armor damage because he has ten armor. And two fawns. So this guy has two fawns, which is it would deal two damage to whoever hits it. So if I hit this guy, I'll deal six damage to his armor and I will take two damage. It makes more sense to throw it on this guy. And if I do it again, 
you'll notice he has this red skull. That means that at the start of his turn, he will die. That is because he has nine bleed. And nine bleed means he takes nine damage at the start of his turn. So what that means is I don't necessarily need to hit this guy again because I know that if I hover over him at the very top, it says here that he is going to be out of the two pigs, the very first one that acts, which means that I can take this guy's turn, this guy's turn, this guy's turn, this guy's turn, and he will start his turn and instantly die. So I don't actually need to hit him anymore. And then it will be this guy. Uh, these are some of Evelyn's buff cards. Um, Transmission is a good example. So what it, what it would do is it will give two mana next turn to someone and one extra card draw. Uh, and this little icon of this fire on the right-hand side means once you play this card, it burns from your deck uh, for the rest of combat. So I, want, I know that Reginald is going to be the next person to play. So I buff him. And his fire fills up, showing he's going to get five additional mana next turn. And if I hover over him in the top left, you can see that he's going to draw two additional cards and he's going to gain two additional mana. And also when you hover over people in the top left or enemies, it shows their resistances, which will be quite useful to show that, for example, this wild boar in the middle right, it shows that he has minus 10 lightning resistance, which means he'll take 10% more damage from lightning damage. Just little things like this help you understand what's going to happen. And I, uh, I can cast this on someone and then it gives a buff. And there's lots of different icons, and if you just right-click or hover over something, it tells you in more detail what they do. There's a lot to onboard here. Um, so I'm just going to finish this combat very quickly. Don't need to worry about much here. This is armor. There's two types of armor. This grey one here is armor you get next turn, and this brown one is armor you get this turn. So what this means on, on um, Andrin here uh, is that he currently has six armor. So this pig could hit him and he takes 6 damage. On top of that, he's going to gain 24 armor next turn. Armor disappears at the end of your turn unless you have a, a buff called Fortify, which tanks tend to be able to give. So I'm going to finish by dealing damage here. Uh, this will deal 19 damage, which will kill him. And that's the end of combat. And as we can see, we can get some card rewards. You choose what you want and uh, then you progress along. And that's sort of the basic of the game, really. Very easy to get going, but there's a lot to learn about all the different damage types. If you go to, this is an example of a book. Uh, you can hover on the right about probabilities of success. So you can either leave and do nothing for no risk. Do note that some of these um, dice rolls, if you get them wrong, you may pick up a curse. So it's not always worth going for these if there's really low probabilities. In this case, I have a 71% chance of hitting a group five or low, which means we'll, every single member of my team will draw a card and the cost must equal five or less. One, one, two, one, which equals five. And so we get some experience points. When you get experience points, you level up and that gives you more bonus cards. And this reward for this event means that we go into a fight, um, but that's fine. When you level up, um, if you click on someone, for example, it says on the right hand side, levels and traits, you'll see that when you get to level two, which is at 160 XP, uh, you get to choose one of these two rewards and everyone has two different rewards and as you go on you get better and better rewards you can also see on this right hand side your draw pile it's not in order so you don't know what you're going to get it's random out of this you get five draws per turn um, discard pile once you play a card it will go into here so for example that and that uh, we'll see in andrew and those are the four cards there vanish cards are cards that burn you can see equipment you can buy equipment from shop from different slots Character sheet, which just tells you stuff. The most important thing on here is usually the stuff at the top, which is speed, just so you can see someone's base speed. And perks, this is what you get from leveling up the more you play. But yeah, there's not much more to it than that. The game, I recommend you get into it and um, just have a bit of fun with it, really. I'll do some more advanced guys later about different characters, how to unlock them, what the best way to build them is. But this is just a very quick start guide about starting to play across the obelisk.